Hey, good morning, Ready First. I'm Colonel Stephen Fairless. I have the honor and privilege of being your brigade combat team commander of the great Ready First combat team. Today, I'm gonna to take just a few minutes, unlike my previous videos uh, that uh, took more than a few minutes, I'm gonna take a few minutes and talk expectations of majors. And why I'm communicating this is because uh, we don't always get a chance to interact on a routine basis. And so it's important for the majors and those who work with the majors to understand what are my expectations of you. So these are a little bit unique to Fairless, uh, but I don't think you're gonna hear anything that's akin to an epiphany as I discuss. So you got three aspects that I'm gonna ask you to focus on. Then I'm gonna remind you of something that might not yet have dawned on you, whether you're a brand new major just coming out of CGSC or SAMS, uh, into the formation as first time as a field grade, or if you've been around a while and you're at the brigade level and uh, you're on your uh, second or third even uh, KD job. So first of all, what do I expect of you? Team, I expect majors, all leaders quite frankly, but especially the majors, it's critically important for the majors to be good team players and good team mates. Team players, so you're selfless. Hey, you've gotten where you, you've arrived, right? You are part of the institution. You don't, if you had been worrying about your career progression, stop, don't worry about it. You're, you're there, right? Team player, you are unselfish in your approach to getting the mission done, and you can no longer be myopic about just setting up your formation for success. You have to look at the broader team. If you're at the battalion squadron level, you must look at how does this impact not just my battalion or squadron, but also the brigade combat team. So my wingmen to my left and to my right. Also, because you're a major, you're beginning to be an organizational level leader. And I'll touch on that in a few moments. What that means is that you need to look beyond the brigade combat team. How does this support what the division needs to do? How does this support what even the core needs to do two levels up? Right, looking down, how does this support the team internal to my battalion or squadron? You have to be a good team player. You have to be a good teammate. When your wingman calls you from an adjacent battalion or squadron or from external to the brigade, is it, oh, I don't know, we'll have to see, or is it, yes, let's figure out how and let's help mitigate the impacts. You have to be a good teammate. You have to be an unselfish teammate in order to be successful as a major. This is a graded event. For those of you whom I currently rate or senior rate, you've seen that in my command philosophy and in my rating philosophy as a rater and senior rater. I rank you, I grade you, I assess your performance and your potential with how well you are performing in what potential you show as a teammate and a team player. So being a part of the team and understanding that and having that reflect in how you approach things and how you communicate is critical. What else? So I expect you to be experts, right? I expect you to be patient. And I expect you to be available. Each of you comes from a different branch. Each of you has a different set of experiences. I expect you to be experts in the doctrine relevant for a brigade combat team and an armored division. Right. So keep current on your doctrinal expertise. If, you, if this is unusual for you to be in a brigade combat team given uh, your MOS or your background, that's fine. Be experts in the doctrine and be an expert in that which you, to which you've already been exposed. Patient, you are, in addition to being a leader, you're a coach, you're a teacher of your subordinates within your formation, battalion squadron or uh, up on the brigade staff. You have to be exceptionally patient in your coaching of not just your subordinates, but also your superiors. You're gonna have a deeper uh, and a greater depth of knowledge to some of the systems that make this organization work, our organizations work, than some of your superiors. You already know that. So you've gotta be patient in the coaching of your superiors, as, but especially your subordinates. Available. You all know, you're a sounding board. You're a sounding board 
uh, for those subordinate leaders, for those subordinate commanders, if you're at the battalion squadron level, uh, and if you're at the brigade level, for same thing, for the battalion squadron commanders and command sergeants major. You've gotta be available for the subordinates within your staff section. You've gotta be available for your wingmen. You've gotta be available for your boss. So be available as a sounding board. Finally, you're both a leader and a manager. Right? You have now transitioned from primarily being involved with direct level management, uh, correctional leadership, and now you are an organizational leader. Organizational leaders have to balance being that direct leader and also managing the organization, managing the systems. And you have to rely on other people to execute the systems that are responsible for keeping the organization running. And finally, let's talk a little bit about reputation. So you've been, your, your understanding of what it means to be a professional have been formed during your time, has been formed during your time as a company level leader. Now as a field grade, regardless of how long you've been a major, your reputation, your professional reputation began the day that you pinned major. Everything that you did as a company level leader, that's important, that's formative. Your professional reputation begins now. So what are you going to do? What do you want your professional reputation to be? Go up to the top three of the things that I enumerated. If that's where you put your focus, then this will take care of itself. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to actively cultivate that. It's hin it hinges upon your ability to accomplish those three things. So again, team, hey, for the majors out there, you are running this brigade combat team. You make this brigade combat team successful or not. Your work with your peer senior NCOs, the command sergeant's major, the operations sergeant's major, and under that, it's by duty title, not necessarily rank. And with the first sergeants and the subordinate command sergeant's major, that is critical. You are the people who are running this organization and who are actually providing the focus and the direction and the bottom-up refinement feedback for how we really need to move forward. Right, so what you're doing is critical, no matter if you're a three, an XO, a one, two, four, six, whatever the case, SPO, whatever the case may be, you're making it happen for the brigade combat team. Hey everybody, first, thanks for your time and attention. For the majors currently assigned, you're doing awesome work. Please continue it. For those of you who have yet to join the team, we look forward to integrating you and your families into the Ready First Combat team. Look forward to working with each and every single one of you, if I have not yet, and we'll see you out in the field. Ready First.